The main photo is a red squirrel and f along the right hand side, starting at the top, there's a Thor's fritillary, a badger and a red squirrel. This is my wildlife watching vlog for my trip to Sweden in summer 2017. Do you know what? I can't quite put my finger on it, but this feels like the most kind of random wildlife watching vlog that I've ever made. So I passed through Sweden, starting off in southern Sweden, which is where this is. Um, this is a view over Stormoss, one of many nature reserves, which, uh, and this is a willow warbler, which I kind of found in a cluster, which seemed like a nice place to go to kind of experience lots of different habitats in Sweden. And on the lake here, I saw this osprey. Do you know what? I can't put my finger on it, but I think maybe it's because, and this, do you know what? I think this video will tell you, if you watch this, you can work out whether you think the same as me about holidays. I prefer to spend slightly longer in one place and not dot around too much. Or, if I do dot around, I like to have a bit of a theme. Whereas, my trip to Sweden, I, in retrospect, especially looking at this video, and at the time, it felt very bitty. Which meant, didn't kind of trigger those kind of endorphin rushes for me, because they weren't the kind of things that I really enjoy in my travelling. I still found it really interesting, and I was revisiting some places that I've been before. Anyway, maybe you want to comment and you could say, yeah, I know what you mean, or, I don't know, this really suited me. So, uh, these are weeper swans seen at the same place, also at Storm Moss. If you look very carefully, there's a couple of signets in there as well. So, in this kind of cluster in southern Sweden, I also visited Takern. Not quite sure about the pronunciation. I'm going to stop apologising for that. I think I'll probably get a few other pronunciations wrong as well. That's the visitor centre, which has a thatched roof. That amazing kind of geometric shape is, is, has been cut out of um, thatch. This is a hare that I saw in the meadow in front of the visitor centre. This was kind of my reward for arriving very early before anybody else at the nature reserve. So I then explored here, and there's a few places you can stop off around the lake. And to the north of the lake, I got a view of some cranes. In fact, a family, two adults and a baby which we're about to see here. I'm not sure they saw me. I was just sort of stood quietly watching. You see they kind of come out onto the road, hang around for a bit, and then I think quite sensibly they go back into the field, because that would seem like very good protection for the baby. So at Tekan, I think is particularly suited to someone in a vehicle. I didn't find a particularly long walk, but there's lots of places you can stop off. And another of the stopping off places, there was, there was a hide where I saw these th three wood sandpipers and a teal on the mud flats. This definitely strikes me as the kind of place where if you hit it during migration, you'd see a lot more birds. But still, even in summer, things of interest to see. So the next place I visited was Kvismera, another relatively famous place, I think, f amongst bird watchers. I've seen it mentioned in quite a few places. This is a tree sparrow. About to see a photo of a hare. This hare was, walk was kind of walking, bounding along the path slowly. I saw it before it saw me, so I kind of just kind of... I sat down under a tree watching... Oh, this is a black turn. Wow. Anyway, so I sat under a tree. It came very close. It never actually saw me, but it eventually it's, it must have been able to smell me or something and it kind of ran off. Black turn. As a British bird watcher, I was so excited to see this black turn. Wow. It's rare that I see one of these. One of the great, one of the popular places, which is called Le Bren in France, where British bird watchers used to go to see black turns. It's not so, so reliable anymore. So even harder for British bird watchers to see now. Unless there's somewhere else I don't know about, but I, I believe it's very difficult. You have to go quite a long way. 
Anyway, exciting for me. And then, I did an early morning walk the next day, so I stayed at this place for two days. So you see I'm getting more of an energy here because I was stayed here for a couple of days, so I feel more of a connection to it, so I enjoyed this bit a bit more than everywhere else. Um, yeah, look at this, I was rewarded with this view of a badger. It's only dark, it's barely dark for a couple of hours. Oh, this is um, some cranes in a field which I saw after I'd done the walk where I saw the badger. It's, it's barely dark and barely for a couple of hours at night, this, this far north on planet Earth, which is why I managed to get such a bright, good quality view of that badger. Uh, this is a red squirrel I saw at Garfitton, an area of protected forest. Another place where I really enjoy going for a walk, but again, wasn't, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to go on about it too much, but, you know, this is this is just, honestly, this is what these wildlife watching vlogs are about. It's just about me kind of chatting about my trip. Um, yeah, I do enjoy getting to know a place more. It was amazing for me to dip in and out of so many different places and see so many different types of habitat and wildlife on this trip through Sweden. And that was an example, that forest was... Uh, here we go. This is Son Mountain, in English. This is a snow bunting which I saw around, on partway around the walk, in fact about halfway around the walk, where it got higher. We're kind of in the Scandies again a bit, which is the range of mountains going up Scandinavia, which is kind of... Oh, this is hare poo, which is very similar to rabbit poo, but I would say it's more rounded, more spherical, a little bit larger. You can see more bits in it. And sometimes it can end up very flattened. This is a wheat ear. This is a willow ptarmigan. I'm about to see willow ptarmigan poo, which is kind of elongated. You can you can see the bits of stick within it. And this is reindeer poo. Which in the summer becomes a bit more kind of, can become a bit more kind of wishy washy. So this is an example of ellipse sort of reindeer poo that's formed uh, formed ellipses. Further north, there's a little cluster of places around Ostersund. Honestly, there are great places to go everywhere in Sweden. I just I feel like this particular spot I chose at random. Here's the lake near Ostersund where you can see, for example, Skota which you can see all over Sweden but this is where I went to see them Skota um, further south away from the Arctic they can be seen in the winter often offshore but here's a family group in the summer because they breed further north within sort of close to the Arctic often on lakes like this Then I went to Lake Anjon, where I kind of hoped there might be some waders to see, but in fact I was too late. This was I was this was approaching the middle of summer by the time I got here. And what is what others describe as a great place to see migrating birds, including waders, um, was just very quiet. I I just saw the odd sort of marshland wildlife like this common frog. And I dipped into another place on the way up through Sweden, which was Mudders National Park. Area of forest with what I think are a couple of really good quality trails. I came in here on a whim because I was driving past and it was like I'd had enough of driving and I wanted to go for a walk. And it was like, wow, actually I think this place is amazing. This is a wax wing. We're about to see an elk track. I felt like... It intermediate sizes it was difficult to tell whether something was an elk track or a reindeer track but this was very very large well over 10 centimeters long so I was confident it was an elk track finally before leaving northern Sweden to enter Norway and mark the end of my trip through Sweden 
I've visited Abisko National Park, which I think has some beautiful trails, and I saw I was very excited to see a Thor's Fritillary, T H O R S, so named after one of the kind of Scandinavian gods. Exciting, felt 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 quite atmospheric. I know it's just a name, but it just kind of yeah, ooh, Thor's Fritillary. There we go. Remember, check out my blog, link in the description to my website and stuff if you want to find out any more.